hi everyone. Oh, can I put this down? Alright, so I've been wondering, is being social really social? We post, share, comment, like, play games and face up all the time on our smartphones. But what about live interaction? You see, two-thirds of Americans own a smartphone and one-fourth of the world uses some sort of social network. Holy guacamole, that's a lot. <laughs> Well, today, when we are waiting at a restaurant for a food or at a family gathering, we usually seem to always flash out to the iPhone or Galaxy. When I see people in these kind of situations, I usually leave them alone and don't bother to talk. They seem preoccupied in whatever they're doing. If you just talk to people, maybe you won't be. I guess that makes people more shunned away from being more social. But well, there's nothing wrong with Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat. There's actually a lot of good in posting. You can post a picture of where you are, what you think, anywhere you are. That's the problem. Too easy. Now, I'm also guilty of shining people away for electronics. When I got my Samsung last year, I, re I realized I became a bit more shy than I was before. <laughs> and for the most part, I regret it because you can't hook to it. You can't stop. There's so much you can do right there instead of out there. Plus, like I just said, it's too easy. So we're all guilty of this. <laughs> And while we are on social media or playing the latest games on our phones, we aren't thinking about how other people feel when they see us on our devices. They may think, oh, this person seems busy doing his or her own thing. I guess they don't want to talk with us. Meanwhile, you notice none of it because you're so engrossed in your phone or other device. Now, there are some drawbacks in using our devices. One big disadvantage is that stress. There's constant ringing, vibrating, and wondering who commented what and what happened in the world. Another major drawback is using our devices at night. Many of us use our devices at night, and studies have shown that using them at night is not very beneficial for our sleep. In the morning, we feel depleted of sleep. Now, there's a great appeal in using our devices, and that would be implementing them to check homework on teacher pages or using a textbook online. I get the sense that we are using our devices all the time. Teachers are smart enough to integrate our studies onto our phones, computers, tablets, etc. Now, is it a good or bad thing instead of just writing your work on a piece of paper and using physical textbooks? I think it is a good thing. Teacher, teachers are trying to make it easier for us to do our work on the devices we like. So thank you, teachers. Now, another great appeal is that with the new iPhone 6, the phone can be the credit card. This will be even more helpful for us so when we forget our credit card at home. It's right on the screen. Uh, <laughs> see there? <laughs> our news feed all the time, checking the newest updates. Just something we don't focus on. We should more focus on going over to a friend's house to talk with people in, with people in person. Or when waiting at a restaurant, uh, asking people what they did in the past week. Or instead, using our or instead of using our fingers to type on a small screen, uh, all we think, maybe, maybe we can express in painting, drawing, singing, playing an instrument, or, or in dancing. And the question is, are we going to achieve this goal of putting our devices down? I don't think that we will need to set our devices down forever. <laughs> I just think we should instead have a mindset thinking about what will I do today instead of what will you text back. Changing our mindsets about what we do will help us set our devices down for a while. Now I'd like to leave us all with one final suggestion. The next time you take out your phone out of your pocket, ask yourself, is the intention of what I'm doing really going to benefit me, my surroundings? With that, I'd like to thank you. Woo!